Welcome to our Energy Connect studio at Adifet 2022. I'm delighted to have it sitting next to me, Andrew Thompson, World Construction Equipment Product Manager, SLV, and Julien Radu, World Construction Regional Sales Manager, MENA, at SLV as well. Thank you so much for joining me on this busy first day of Adipec. Oh, thanks for having us. Good morning, thank you. Now, let's just start with you, Andrew. Um, I heard that you're celebrating a significant milestone this year, Andrew. Can you tell a bit, me a bit more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So it is the 100 year anniversary since the invention of the BOP. Um, our founder, Harry Cameron, and his partner, James Abercrombie, um, invented that product 100 years ago. Wow. Um, and at the time, it was the most significant um, stepping stone in oil and gas industry safety at that point. And what's amazing about it is 100 years on today, while we've seen development around mm. being able to, um, the BOP being able to, um, you know, sustain, um, you know, improve, sorry, higher pressures, um, better performance in terms of elastomer ceiling and so on, the actual fundamentals of that design are very much still like what they were 100 years ago. So it's testament to, to that original design and how far advanced those guys were. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Julian, I want to bring you in here, you know, as, Andrew saying that you know, after a century of development, is there still possible ways to innovate? Yes, actually there is. And that is the, the strength of SLV, it's trying always to push the boundaries, always to tackle new challenges. Yeah. So in that particular space, the broad preventer space, mm -hmm. I would say um, innovation is twofold. The first one is continuous improvement. How do you make the existing product, this design, evolve? Yeah. Uh, in the region, for instance, we're seeing very harsh wells now that the NOCs yeah. Ramco and Noc are trying to tackle. So what we do is we push to the extreme our existing designs. Um, and when you look at the, the very first BOP, which probably was this big, right? <laughs> and the latest design, which wouldn't fit in this room, you can tell they're coming from the same family tree. So that's right. evolution. On the second hand, we're also trying to think, how can we anticipate on the future? How can we apply technologies that were not available five years ago, or even two years ago, to that particular product, the BOP, and that's more of a revolution. And that's where we're coming into the electrification of the BOP system. Interesting, yeah, and I want to get your viewpoint then here, Andrew, on, you know, there's an increased focus on digital solutions right. within the energy industry. How does the next generation of BOP technologies you've been referring to fit into that space? Yeah, so Julian's just referred to the fact we're trying to shift from a hydraulic system to an electric mm -hmm. system. Um, in doing so, we, we open the opportunity to have far greater sensors development, sensor deployment, instrumentation, yep. and so on on the stack. Get far greater um, system feedback. Right. Um, and by doing that, we can actually start to talk about integrating the well control system as yep. a part of the drill, and, the drill and workflow. The goal would be to ultimately create automated or partially automated well control. Okay. Um, and by that, what we mean is um, we want to start to integrate the BOP system and some of the technology that we have down hole. So if you, um, if you have like an airway kick detection system that can communicate with the BOP system itself, notify the driller at surface that they detected a change in pressure at the bit, then you know, they have an airway notification of a potential incident that allows them to make greater, more intelligent yeah. and informed decisions. And I wonder just how the, you know, this next generation um, of equipment tie into um, the ambitious plans in the energy industry of reducing carbon Right. Um, and how does that fit in with some of the technologies you just talked sure. about? Sure. So, I mean, again, you know, we've already talked about the, the importance of electrifying the BOP system and yeah. um, the removal of all the hydraulics from that system is going to enable a reduction in carbon footprint for each one of our customers and each one of the rigs operating today. However, I really think the biggest part that well control can play in terms of reducing the carbon emissions yeah. um, from our operations today is helping drilling contractors and operators reduce the amount of time that's been spent on the well. Okay. Okay, so one of the biggest uh, technologies we're working on right now to enable that is the development of a subsea managed pressure drilling system. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to start to integrate the managed pressure drilling system and the BOP stack. Um, we, to be able to do that, we want to move the RCD subsea. And right. in doing so, we're going to be able to offer far greater wellbore stability, extended casing runs, and so on. Um, and, and if we can do that, we're going to help reduce well construction time, and therefore less time spent on the well, less carbon emissions for each rig that's operating. There you go. And yeah, what about um, Julian around you know, sustainability? You know, how can you help extract resources more efficiently, probably, then? So beyond the, the BOP, I know we've been talking about the BOP because at the start of the show today, but beyond yeah. the BOP, when you look at the rig, uh, rig itself, yeah. the diesel generators are the, the ones that emit the most uh, carbon, right? So mm -hmm. we also are tackling that. Uh, right now, we are working on a solution with different tiers, starting okay. with the software, battery system and the end game is that we remove all the gensets the the diesel generation yeah. 
and we replace them with hydrogen fuel cells. So right now we're looking at slowly but surely reducing the emissions from 12%, uh, 25%, the end game being 100% yeah. zero emission drilling rig. Yeah, I, th I think, um, can I, if I could add yeah, another please. comment as well. I mean, I think one of the areas we can talk about carbon reduction and the systems we've talked about today with managed pressure drilling and IPM and so on, Look, as the industry energy um, mix shifts more towards brownfield development, it's very important that we can access and extend field life to help um, avoid capital intensive and carbon intensive new developments. And you know, things like managed pressure drilling will enable drillers and operators today to access these lower parts of the reservoir going through depleted, depleted zones. Yeah. Um, so those, those technologies we're talking about will enable that um, and help the industry as a whole reduce its carbon footprint. Great, Andrew and Julian, I really appreciate you coming down and obviously we're just at the start of Adipec, so I'm sure you're going to have lots of interesting discussions and presentations at the SLB stand. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We drop by and, and see we have a lot of new technology, a lot of exciting stuff going on there. So, And of course, there's the launch of our new SLB brand, yep. uh, which we're all very excited about. And um, yeah, this is a, a fantastic time to have the show coming straight up after we've just launched Yes, that. you can't avoid the new brand, but uh, thank both of you for coming down. I really appreciate it. Good thank conversation. You thank you very much. Thank you.